Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're enjoying your Sunday afternoon. Today's topic is on Mosorio Teachers College. We are focusing on them because people with special needs require special equipment to enable them to attain their goals and their dreams. Mosorio is setting the pace for this, providing special equipment and accommodating people with special needs to enable them achieve their, their dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Touch Show. Touch your life and change someone. As a new dawn start in Rift Valley province, students at Mosorio Training Teachers College are already up and about advancing their classwork. From a distance, the class seems like any other, but on a closer scrutiny, students with different abilities have found a haven of learning with no discrimination. Well, we started uh, admitting these students uh, five years ago, and uh, all along we have been admitting yeah, a number of them. Among this group, we have um, totally blind. And also we have low vision. Yeah, this low vision includes the albino. Yeah, and uh, they are doing well. With a student capacity of over 700, 60 of whom are abled differently, the college endeavors to meet the individual and disabled specific needs of all students. Sloping ramps, braille writing machines, participation in games for various impaired persons, specialized support services, and an elaborate assessment of these unique educational needs is set off by the administration to ease the students' stay. I should inform you that these people want, they require to be appreciated, to be loved, to be encouraged. Now, right now here, I think that difference does not, uh, is not there. We have them like uh, anybody else. And uh, even them, they don't feel that they are slightly, uh, uh, they, they are different, no. They, are, they, are, they, they socialize well with everyone. And as I have told you, everybody here, we look at ourselves as, you know, the same people. An exhibit of various trophies, awards and medals in the principal's office tells the story of its quest for excellence every year in academic and co-curriculum activities. Currently, the defending champions in ball game, this institution has facilitated the team everywhere possible to ensure the realization of the students' potential. In 2009, we came back with position one. Both our men and our ladies were position one. So we felt it is a drop. But we are believing that this year we are going to go back to the top, where we are going to be number one, the ladies and the males team. In spite of the distinctive admission of students, Mosoriot is accredited in the region for disciplined and well-behaved students. We hardly punish the students on, uh, who have special needs. Yeah, because of their unique nature, they don't really give us problems. Because the kind of punishments which uh, basically we, 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 we administer, uh, basically on, on normal students, things like outings, they sneak out, um, they get late to class, sometimes they go out for the weekends, they don't come back on time. At times they get drunk, but our students, uh, the VIS and the others who have special um, needs, they, they are good students. As new students come, the institution is determined to achieve quality education, provide equal access to core and specialized curricula through specialized books and equipment. However, their noble intention has faced a lot of challenges. For now, 
The institution calls the society at large to synchronize the effort in educating persons with special needs. My first guest is Alex, Alex Karibu. Asante sana. You are a lecturer. Yes, I am. Tell us what you teach and uh, maybe both your names because right. at least I know you, I can call you Alex. Right. <laughs> okay, my name is Alex Parsaloi Munyere. I come from Kajiado. Okay. But I teach at Mosoriot. I lecture social studies and uh, I've been there for the last uh, quite a bit of uh, one year. And uh, yeah. You obviously went through college right. for you to become a teacher. Right. Where did you study your um, teaching? It was a long way. Yeah. I went to Kagumo Teachers College. I did a diploma in teaching. I also went to Kenyatta University for a degree in uh, teaching. And uh, still I went back to Kenyatta University uh, for a master's. Wow. What yeah. challenges did you face then? Oh quite a number of challenges yeah. because um, given the fact that I have a um, low vision and a person living with albinism, I went to regular schools and uh, regular programs, but there were so, so many challenges there, uh, yeah. ranging from my um, high school days right over to university. Uh, was Kagumo, or even up to now, is and was Kagumo or Nairobi University well equipped? Yes, uh, thanks God, Kenyatta University is one of the best universities in this uh, southern Sahara. Yeah. Uh, it accommodates a lot of children or students with visual impairment. And most of the lecturers there, I think, I don't know whether it is by, uh, by, by making or what, they are aware that we have children with visual impairment. And they, they do their lectures there, they verbalize everything, and whenever they give uh, examples on the chalkboard, and maybe even universities' ho ho lecture halls are so big, yeah. such that even to the, the sighted student at the back of the hall would not see. So that makes the lecturer have no other alternative but verbalize to just talk, yeah. talk his lecture. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was uh, that was okay with the Kenyatta University, and then Kagumo College. Well, there was a bit of a problem, but I I did and uh, I, I I did uh, underwent the, the whole system well, because one thing that God gave me is the the gift of talking. I don't keep quiet, <laughs> and whenever I I I, I see a, a teacher is not uh, giving me what I require, yeah. I don't shy out talking to the teacher. You verbalize and, it. And uh, I verbalize to the teacher and then yeah. I use the, 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 the of course, the, 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 the gift that God gave me of smiling to the teacher and then the teacher would cooperate with me. Why did you choose to be a teacher? Uh, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I was just born to be a teacher because yeah. at one point during my, my working days, um, I worked even as an education officer but I have to be very, very honest that uh, I, I, I went back to teaching, to Mosorio to teach. I'm feeling more comfortable, uh, apart from, of course, the fact that Mosorio is so far from my family. Aww. But I'm feeling very comfortable teaching as opposed to working in the, in the office. Yeah. That one is very interesting. So I don't know. I'm just born a teacher. Okay. Right. What's different with Mosorio compared to other colleges? Dif Mosorio Teachers College has, um, I believe, has a heart, a big heart for, for students with disabilities. Let, let us not talk of visual disabilities because we have even the physical disabilities, including the, the, the extreme physical disability, one who is walking, uh, who is uh, negotiating on wheelchair. Uh, we have a college that has an administrator or the management of the college that has uh, very accommodative um, for, for students with disabilities. Yeah. They have done the ramps, they have done uh, the, 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 the sensitization, the lecturers are sensitized about uh, how to handle with students with disabilities. And the college generally uh, comes up to even support uh, students with visual or other disabilities way beyond their limits, even going beyond their budgetary allocations wow. to, 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 to support these students. Uh, 
What would you want colleges to equip themselves with, to enable people with either visual or physical impairment to be comfortable? Yeah, I would invite all the other colleges to come to Mosoriot and see. <laughs> we have a resource center mm -hmm. for the visu VIS, visually impaired students, where we have um, personnel who are employed there by the college who are uh, doing what we call uh, transcribing. They, they, they get a textbook, they translate the textbook into Braille wow. for the student with VIS to, to be able to, 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 to read. read. Yes. We have uh, CCTVs, magnifying uh, kind of uh, closed circuit t television, yeah. where you put a textbook on the, c it is the, the, the what, whatever the text is you are reflected. reading is uh, magnified, and then you can adjust the, the font you want. Wow. Yeah? If you are low vision, totally low vision, then you can make it as big as you want, and then you can continue reading, reading, reading. Mm -hmm. We have, um, apart from that, of course, we have uh, other ad um, computers that are fitted with gadgets that can read text and verbalize whatever is there, like the jaws. I see. Like the, the, the dolphin pen. We got it from the site servers. What does and it do, the dolphin pen? The dolphin pen. It, transcribe, it translates text into Words. into sound yeah it will make text into sound right this would be something expensive that an individual wouldn't afford but would require the to dolphin them pen to is start. very handy because it's like a flash disk you carry it all along with you and whenever you go to a computer you just fix a computer with it and then it will change all uh, whatever you will now tell it. If you want it to magnify, it will magnify it. If you want it to verbalize, it will verbalize whatever you are, you are reading or typing. Is this affordable to an individual? It is, well, let's say it's affordable and it's not affordable because um, it costs quite a bit of uh, about 1,000, 1,500. Okay. Yeah, that is not affordable. You talk of the life of a student, yeah. you tell him to chuck out 200 shillings, it's too much for him. Yeah. So telling him again 1,500 1, plus the other requirements lot. that they it's have. A lot. All right. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll meet the principal of Mosoriot. Don't go anywhere. Touch a life and someone. Like Alex, Gloria is also albinistic, but she's found comfort in Mosoriot. She's a student there, learning to be a teacher. Let's have a look at her life. Living with albinistic condition, Gloria Chemngetich has faced scores of challenges since day one in the world. I was young, maybe they could say Msungu, but later on they adapted it. At least they could know that there is a person of this kind. But when you go to other places, they may be afraid of you. They can even say, maybe it's not a person, maybe how does, where does he come, where does she come from, or he come from? Because mostly are little children, because they don't know. They are really afraid, maybe. But when you, you stay with them further on, they, you'll see that they are changing. But the most painful part is when the parents keep on, maybe they say, this one, I will not take her to school or I will not take him to school because they will, she or he will not assist me. Something of such beliefs. Maybe they say, maybe there was a cast in the home so that I gave her to this kind of a child. That is what very, we face main, mainly in the society. However, never at any point of her life anticipated for preferential treatment from anyone. With a low vision, glasswork has been a day-to-day -day struggle. So mostly what was very challenging there may be the practicals for biology, chemistry, and physics. Because sometimes they need that you use your sense of sight for maybe controlling all the practicals in the lab. And that is where the problem was. But I tried a lot because later on I did all the practicals like any other because the regular teachers doesn't know about that problem. It was hard for me. Maybe I sit at the back, I will not see clearly at the board. Probably I sit mostly in forward. 
upset so that I would be clear with what the teacher was writing on the board. <laughs> With the her goals in life set and fixed, she knows she must do whatever it costs to give back the society what it bestowed her. A belief that has constantly stirred her desire for a noble profession, teaching. I am satisfied with this profession because you can handle all sorts of children. Maybe the hearing impaired, at least you can assist them because at least I have the knowledge of the special education and this knowledge of the regular primary regular primary teacher where you can teach regular pupils and now I have on addition of it I can now understand their challenges how they feel when they are hated maybe when how they feel when you put them aside you say this one later on and then you start working for the others first and then this one comes later on so now I handle them equally because I understand them because I am part of them Every second of every day she spends with the children is a blessing. To her, they are not pupils, but a family. The teaching practice you enjoy because you are really, you get to know the whole types of behaviors that the children have. Because maybe some are, maybe because of behavior, they don't know how to behave, they will tell you, teacher, I am not writing, so you will really enjoy because you will, you will encourage him and discuss the reason to why he or she is not writing and then you will try to assist. In her final year at Mosori Teachers College, Gloria is a champion in the ball game, a sporting activity for people with vision impairment. There are clubs whereby you can play the ball ball game and it is played by six players, three on the other side and three on the other side. It is somehow like football but it is used by where you throw it using your hands but you have to have the blindfolders whereby you close your eyes so that you use the hearing the sense of hearing. As a captain of the team, determination, passion, and a positive mental attitude towards life has seen her lead the team to the national status. Gloria is good. She has been a good player and a disciplined one. In fact, we are anticipating that we train them and we incorporate them in the national team. Gloria gives full credits to the administration and students' fraternity of the college for everything she has achieved for they have been her driving force in times of adversity. We have a lot of friends whereby at least they are educated because they can assist you maybe with something where you don't see clearly, they can read you the notes, like for the totally, totally or visually, whereby they cannot see at, at all. They help them to move around, they can help them to close the windows because sometimes they don't see where the windows are or where they are going, so they assist them. Maybe during rain seasons also they assist them from the dining hall maybe to classes and to move around the college. For now, though she has a long way to go in life, she has a reason to smile. With me right now is the principal of Mosoriot, Mr. Samuel. Welcome to the show. Thank you. How long have you been uh, working in Mosoriot? Yeah, I've been there for the last 10 years. How have you seen it grow to accommodate people with special needs? Yeah, initially that program was not there. But then uh, when the ministry closed Hyrie Teachers College, where the co program was uh, run, they transferred uh, the transfers it to Mosorio Teachers Training College. Okay. Uh, that was in the year 2005. So since then we have been admitting students with visual impaired, uh, visual impaired. Okay. Yeah. What do you offer? I know he talked about uh, the equipment that you have that's different. But do you offer different lectures for them? No. Or do they go through regular classes like everyone else just with the special equipment? Yeah, the lecturers, we have uh, a number of lecturers who have trained in the visually impaired area. Uh, like Alex, he has come from Kenyatta University. Yeah. He trained in this area. We have a number of others also who are posted there by the TSC to come and teach this special group. But they teach generally everyone, but at some stages, they take special attention to these people, okay. to see that uh, they are accommodated, their needs are, uh, are attended to, and uh, that's what we have been doing. 
Have you have you worked elsewhere other than Mosoriot? Yeah, of course I was in high school. Yeah. I've been in all sectors of education, technical education, high school, and now teacher education. What are we lacking in these areas to help people with what is different in Mosoriot? Yeah, what is uh, very clear here is that these people are not prepared to accommodate these people. Uh, this will require special equipment. Uh, I think we can say the society is not prepared yeah. uh, to have these people uh, be trained, get education. The society does not provide this equipment. And it's about time. Yeah, I think uh, we are lagging behind in a way, yes. What's your opinion on schools that uh, have special needs schools and reintegrating back, uh, them, integrating them into a regular school? What, what's your take on that? What would you rather have? Uh, that's not a bad idea because these people should actually live with the others. They should not be isolated. They should not be discriminated. Uh, what they require is support from uh, those who are in those institutions. The way we do in Mosoria, we try our level best to support these people, to provide for them where possible. And I should also say that the ministry is also giving us some support. Why do you find yourself going over and above what is expected of you and what you'd receive to accommodate people with special needs? Yeah, these are... Uh, these are our children, by the way. They are our brothers. They are our sisters. And uh, they didn't plan themselves to be there. Actually, naturally, you find them, you know, we bring them in our homes. God yeah. gives them to us. So in a way, as much as we think about the others, the other children, we have also to consider that we have these children and they are our children. And I think uh, when we talk about the larger society, these people are there, and we have to provide, we have to support them, we have to yeah, live the, love them and provide for them in all aspects. Just and they're the your way, clients too. Yes, they yes. are our clients. Yeah. Just the same way you would provide for you know, the other clients, our customers, Yeah. I should say. Well, if you own any facility, now you know, you're limiting your clientele base. Just consider the people who need this special attention and special social amenities. We're taking a short break. We'll be right back after this. Sometimes having special needs can limit your expectations from people and even what, you, what the world can provide for you. It can limit the scope of your dreams. This is what happened to Christine. Let's have a look at this. While a third year student at Catholic University nine years ago, Christine Lunahi knew little of her destiny as a fortitude of strength over adversity. When she woke up in a hospital bed after a road accident, life was gloomy. Hope for a brighter future was feeble. I went in a coma for like two weeks. I didn't know where I was. And then when on waking up so to realize where I was, my, my ward, the way I, I mean where I was, was full of friends. Very many of them were there, my relatives, everyone else was there. So on the spot I knew that everyone else was supporting me. But with time, they, like, they sort of started drifting away from me. Most of them came, came for some time, and then after some time, I, I didn't see anybody. I was like left alone. So that is when I realized that uh, this life is not very easy. I was to face it alone. Discharged in a wheelchair, she knew things were never going to be the same again. Yet, life had to go on. An attitude that changed her whole life and her perception about what life is. At least in Nairobi, life was easier. You know, there was electricity, there was tarmac road all over, and the pavements were there. So I knew life there would continue well. But now realizing that I was going to the rural area, area where 
things are very hard, you know, the, the roads and even the way people would look at me, they wouldn't understand. It was bringing a lot of fear to me. But at one time I made a prayer. I told God, God, I know I'm going to die because sh seriously, I thought I was going to die. So I told God, God, I know I'm going to die. But if I don't die, show me how to live. Though for a while depression took a greater toll on her life, she vowed to soldier on against all odds. Her deep desire of being successful in life never faded away. I didn't see her as crying for herself. I've not seen her. Yes, she goes through some pains, but you rarely would see her depressed. You rarely would see her feeling sorry for herself. And in a way, she's an encouragement. Mine has been probably some counseling here and there. But again, even if you do counseling, it goes down to the persons to be able to bring themselves up. So she has a drive to do her chores. She has a drive to do her studies. And uh, so far, I think she's still a strong woman. Her deep desire of being successful in life never faded away. If they, they cannot accept me to stay in school, let me just rent a small house and then I'll come with somebody to help me. And then she talked to the principal. The principal was like, just bring her, we shall know how to help. So when I came here, they gave me a, a house around the school and I came with a helper from home. That is how I picked up now from there. I started learning. Uncertain of her survival in the school after admission, Christine buried herself in books to keep herself occupied. As time went by, myriads of friends surrounded her. I've actually gotten the support of everybody in this place. Like, the principal has been very kind to me. Actually, like, uh, as far as the place is concerned, when there, there, there were times, these, these people, I have a friend called Anne. Anne has been very, very, very helpful. She has been wheeling me around and she, could, she can even leave whatever she's doing just to come and help me. So there were times we could not climb some places, you know. They are so steep and then it could not be possible. But the principal had to go out of his way to make sure that the ramps are put for me to access so many other places in the school. Envied by her classmates from outstanding classwork to house chores, she knows she has to do a little extra work to be ahead of the rest. You will pray to him good? My first teaching practice was, it wasn't bad, but in, it, it, it actually depended on how I took it at first. It, you know, I looked at it with a lot of fear. I wasn't, I was looking at it like now, how am I going to write on the board? How am I going to, to, to talk to those children, you know, moving around the class? And you know, when I just reached the, the school like that, everybody else came out, the children came out. And that one brought a lot of fear on me. I was like, now, oh, hey, if they're behaving like this when we are outside, how much more in class, in the classroom? So, but I gained courage. Christine uh, has been very bright given the fact that her previous training she she was in a university and uh, she had even gone up to third year in a university training before she was reduced by her disability to coming back to p1 uh, training however she doesn't look at that as a reducing uh, force but she sees her joining to p1 college as a, a new life a beginning Again, uh, it is actually a new sprout. She's sprouting up again and she's very much self-driven and self-motivated. And we are uh, looking forward to her uh, scoring a very good distinction. Determined, Christine appreciates every help that comes her way and confess never to wallow in self-pity. Seated with me right now is uh, Miss Helen Obande, the Director for United Disabled Persons with Disability of Kenya. Karibu. Thank you. Uh, when, when was uh, UDPK started? Okay, UDPK was started in 1989, um, so it's been in existence for almost 20 years. And the main focus of UDPK, it brings together 
the different groups of people with disabilities under the same umbrella. It's actually the umbrella body for disabled persons organizations, you know, you have the deaf with different uh, groups of, mm -hmm. of, of, of people with disabilities. You have the visually impaired, they have their own unions. You have um, learning disabilities with their own unions, mental and intellectual disabilities. So they come together under the banner of the United Disabled Persons of Kenya. Why was there a need for them to come together under one umbrella? Uh, to give voice to, to disability in Kenya. At that time, there was no law that was specific on issues of disability. Uh, even there was no specific body or government arm that was dealing with issues of disability. So it was important that um, these groups articulate um, issues of disability through one voice. And we saw that, for example, in 2003, we got the Persons with Disabilities Act, yes. um, which was a very key milestone for persons with disabilities because before then there was no legal framework. This was the first. Yes. Uh, what does it What does it say? And has it been implemented at all? It actually starts by establishing the National Council for Persons with Disabilities, which is now the government arm that addresses issues of disability within government. Um, then it moves ahead and looks at the rights of people with disabilities, um, access to education, access to health, and then one of the major barriers. Uh, for people with disabilities, which is accessibility, whether it's to the physical in infrastructure, yeah. whether it's to the public transports and vehicles, um, whether it is accessibility in terms of information. So it addresses all the rights of persons with disabilities. And this is working? Y well, implementation has a bit of challenge, eh? yeah. but, but at least uh, the government has done a, a, a huge step um, towards addressing the barriers that persons with disabilities face. Um, uh, the only limitation that was there, for example, was the act came into place in 2003, but it was not fully gazetted. You know, they gazetted just sections. I see. The other sections became operational over time. Um, for example, the access orders, you know, f making buildings accessible, uh, the gazette notice uh, was done in 2010, early 2010. So that meant that uh, although the act has been in place for more than for around five years, yeah. uh, some of the sections are just starting now to be implemented. But I think they also needed time to put the framework uh, for the council and also to look for the resources to do all the necessary changes that are required. Yeah, mm -hmm. obviously lobbying for the rights of persons with disabilities is one of your key points. Mm -hmm. But what else does uh, UPDK does? Uh, we raise awareness on, on, on issues of disability through media, um, through flyers. We have small meetings, um, barazas, you know, telling, you know, making the community aware of issues of disability, but also raising awareness among persons with disabilities themselves about their issues. Um, if you're talking about rights, you have the government or uh, who has to give you rights to a great extent. But again, the people who are claiming those rights must know what they are claiming for and to what extent they should claim those rights. So the rights, you know, rights will never come until you claim them. Yes, apparently. Like now we have a beautiful constitution that went through. Yeah. Uh, people with disabilities were very elated at all the changes that are there. We have a very extensive bill of rights for people with disabilities to access education, uh, to access health, employment. employment, and we are very excited about it. But translating that into action, that is what UDPK does, you mm -hmm. know, um, lobbying with the government to make sure that those, you know, the commitments that the government has made are implemented, yeah, and they are realized. Um, I know that in the program you've talked about, uh, for example, giving, you know, people with special needs requiring some equipment. It's not just about equipment. It's something we call reasonable accommodation. Yeah. And for every person with disability, it will be different. For a deaf person, there are those who might re require hearing aid, then they'll be able to, to hear. But there are those who will not hear at all, so they will require a sign language interpreter. For somebody with physical disability, it may be a ramp. But once they get into the building, do they have a lift to go upstairs to see a manager? Mm. Like in most banks, you find the manager is always upstairs. <laughs> 
So when yeah. will these managers start coming down? Or how do they make the lift available for people with disabilities? So reasonable accommodation is just beyond the equipment. And also the attitude. Yeah, so, and also the attitude. If I come to, you, to KBC to work and I have a disability, how will my fellow employees look at me? Uh, yeah. How will they judge me? In some situations when I'm not performing, even when I'm not just performing as Helen, they'll start saying, you know, that kind of prejudice and stereotypes that the society has is what we try to challenge also as UDPQ. Do you try to push for policy change within the government and within employment uh, uh, areas as well? Yes. The, our biggest milestone was the coming into force of the Persons with Disabilities Act. That was a lot of years. You know how acts in Kenya take even 10 Forever. years to come into force? Yes. So that there was a whole process around it. Now, the constitution, you're talking about over 20 years trying to review the constitution. There was a conscious effort towards looking at the, all the drafts that have been all, of, all in and out, yeah. identifying the issues for persons with disabilities, doing memoranda, for example, to the committee of experts, working with the committee of experts to make sure that issues of disability are in, working with parliament uh, also to make sure that they don't mutilate the gains you know, that people with disabilities had. And now that it's, uh, it's gone through, again, working with the different organs like the Constitution Implementation Commission to make sure that those gains that were there are realized. You know, like in the next five years, we are looking at about 50 different pieces of legislation that will be done to wow. make sure the Constitution works. So how all those uh, laws affect us. So we have to input in all those laws. Uh -huh. That's a huge job, just, just the, the policy and legislation alone. It's if we're talking about the education policy, the education laws, you have to look at it, pull out what you need to review. That's what advocacy is. You give solutions. You don't just tell them, you know, this There's is a the problem. Yeah. yeah. But you look for the solutions. Wow. Yes. How, why did you decide to do, the, what to do this? It must be obviously very challenging. Why did you choose to do it? I'm, I'm very passionate about disability, and I've done disability all my life, including when I was working here at the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation okay. as a radio presenter. Okay. I started a program which was called Focus on Disability, specifically to challenge the stereotypes that people have, and also to raise awareness on issues of disability. I have moved forward to children's rights, and even in children's rights, I was looking at issues of children with disability. Why? And now I am. <laughs> I have even gone to school to study disability. It's just your passion, then. It's, it's just my passion. So um, I think we are all called to do different things. You're lucky to have found a purpose. Some <laughs> yes. of us are still looking for it. <laughs> yes. Uh, finally, before we finish, what's the perfect world mm -hmm. for you in your eyes? Having all that passion all your life, what's the perfect world for a person with disability? It's a world which appreciates and recognizes diversity. We, all, we are all diverse. We are Kikuyu, we are Luo, we are Kalenjin. I think disability is the 44th tribe in Kenya, and it doesn't matter what type of disability you have. I think the best thing is where all of us are appreciated, and uh, we see that through the programs, we see that through the services. I know I should not be denied a service or discriminated just because I have a disability. I should feel like I belong to this Kenya because I'm proud to be Kenyan. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you see a point? Because for me, every time we speak about people with special needs, the first thing that comes to mind is television mm -hmm. and all these programs and how limiting mm -hmm. it is for persons with uh, visually impaired, with a hearing impairment, who are intellectually handicapped. There's basically no form of entertainment yeah. for them. Do you see a point of us getting there, including? I think you've started the journey. Uh, through this program, you're raising awareness on issues of disability. You're touching lives. You know, when I did uh, what I did at the English service, I still meet people, people with disabilities, who woke up and started going to school and, and feeling they're important because of that program. Wow. So you may never know the change you're making, but there are so many lives you're touching. But in terms of uh, mainstreaming disability in media, it's a big issue. Um, the media programs should dedicate, for example, um, a certain percentage, maybe 10% of your programs should be specific to raise awareness on issues of disability, but also 
um, in terms of entertainment, include everyone. Exactly. You know, like Alex said before, uh, the biggest challenge for the deaf is um, they can't listen to the news. They can't, they can't, you know. So they are left out, and there's no specific slot that is even given, uh, like a weekly roundup for news for, no. pe for deaf people. So that kind of inclusion is what we are looking forward to working with the media and we are lobbying yeah we've, we've we've done a memo we've taken it to the media editors we are getting to the media managers to make sure that the management um buys into the idea to make sure that even the deaf are their clients and they have to watch True. news and, and and listen to to the program because the only things i see interpreted most of the times is the churches where there's a preacher and that's the only time I see something interpreted for the for the uh, for the deaf for example yeah. and for me I, I I'm starting to see how much because it's how many Kenyans do have these disabilities do you have some statistics we have different statistics um, the Kenya survey in 2007 put it at about 4.5 million eh? Wow. The recent census puts it at about 1.5 million. So there's still a big disparity uh, in terms of the, of the census. Yeah. But what we are saying that if the deaf are estimated to be about 600,000, imagine 600,000 people who don't know what happened today, whether Ruto or, or the president, for example, or the prime minister, whatever they said, they, they, have no uh, idea. Somebody, they, they depend on a second or third party to get to know what is happening. That's a huge exclusion. That's human rights issues. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Helen. Thank you. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back. You're still on the Taj Show. We are lobbying for people or persons with different abilities. Those you call disabled, they are people with different abilities. And today's show, we're just making sure that you're sensitized and you realize that we need to include these people. Right now, we are taking questions from the audience. We have a question. Wangala George from KMC. My question is to Alex from Mosoriot. Uh, I like what you're doing at Mosoriot. And my question is, uh, as a teacher, what do you experience or what are the challenges you face in class? As in you are visually impaired and you're also, as in you are an albinism. There are so many challenges, but uh, as I said earlier, I try to overcome the challenges by uh, cheering up. And every day I remind myself that I'm wonderfully and fearfully made. When I go to class, I interact with my, uh, with my students very freely and I never allow them to see my disability or my uh, differentness. I never allow them to see that and I always uh, prepare my content, my subject content. I want to be very humorous. I want to really come over and above the other lecturers and I want to love them much. So in that way, I, 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 I let them focus more on what I'm doing and what I'm telling them, other than what I am. And uh, as, as of my low visionness, uh, that's a huge challenge because you realize when you want to teach, um, you interact with your, with your students at the same time, you want to get the, the, the information from whatever you've, you've written. So that requires a lot of uh, memorization and a lot of uh, rehearsal. I have to get the, the content of what I'm teaching uh, way ahead so that it is more or less coming from my, my head more than referring. Because if I keep on referring, I do what we call nose reading. Uh, yeah. just keeping uh, the document close to my to my to myself and that would not augur very well with my student so most of the time I, I i i have to rehearse and that is not only a problem to me uh, it is a huge problem to all of us with visual impairment and in fact at this juncture let me take talk of a small story of a, a student that i teach there at mosoriot called ezra who has very low vision, he's actually blind, 
but he was given a kibarua way back at home to teach in a certain primary school. And unfortunately, he didn't have uh, a braille to, to write the notes. You know, the braille is the, the, the printer that prints whatever you want to write. So what he was telling me that he was doing is that at night, he would get somebody to read the textbook for him. And then the whole night, he would memorize everything, put it into his head. And then the following day, he would go and teach wow. off head. So most of the time, we do that. And it is quite a challenge. But with the technology, then we can have uh, overhead projectors. We can have uh, other kinds of technologies that can assist us. But in Kenya, we are yet to move to that. And that is where Mosoriot we are heading to. In fact, we have a, a, an ICT department that has overhead projectors and it's working on that. And we, 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 we very much encourage the lecturers who are coming there with visual impairment that in future their life is going to be very comfortable. I'm Beatrice Kamanja from Kenya Institute of Mass Communication. My question goes to Ms. Helen. As an organization, do you offer the equipment to the people with disability like wheelchairs and hearing aids? Thank you, Beatrice, so much for that question. Um, the United Disabled Persons of Kenya, by its very nature of its work, we focus on lobbying and advocacy, and then issues of policy and legislation. So as an organization, we don't give assistive devices. However, we do work with service providers, like the Association of the Physically Disabled of Kenya, APDK. Uh, they, ha they, they have a, a huge workshop where they produce um, different uh, assistive devices. We have the Jaipur uh, Food Project, where you know those who, don't re those who require um, prosthetics, prosthesis, um, mm. can go there. Uh, but we also get, when somebody comes to us, then we, we, we refer them to the relevant service providers. We also have the National Council and the National uh, Development Fund for persons with disabilities, which actually has a specific budget that is geared towards giving assistive devices. If you need a hearing aid, if you need a wheelchair, if you need a tricycle, if you need whatever it is that you need, there's a process you follow and then they fund you to, to get that. So I guess uh, the challenge is for uh, the media also to give us a chance to advertise those services that they are available and people can, can get them. And the other challenge is also to make sure, for example, the person in the village accesses um, these devices. So we have some satellite offices in different districts where people go and then they get um, assistance. Yeah. Thank you so much, students of Kenya Institute of Mass Communication, for being such a lovely audience. Principal Samuel To, thank you so much. Alex Munieri, your son, thank you for coming. Of course, Mosorio Taklaj, thank you so much. Helen, thank you for representing us. And for your hard work, we hope you get blessings and keep doing what you do. And we wish you luck. Also, DJ Rafkat. <laughs> Thank you for providing the entertainment. It's fun when we have breaks because you're there. Thank you so much. Viewers at home, on behalf of the production crew, thank you so much for keeping us on air. Write to us, join us on Facebook. Our email address is tajthetalkshow at yahoo.com or taj at kbc.co.ke. Until next Sunday, stay tuned for your local news. Goodbye.
Channel One, Kenya's watching. Hello and welcome. As always, it's a pleasure to have you with us today. Well, you have all heard or at least know the Sarakasi dancers. Sarakasi started as a group of five dancers and now has grown to unlimited number of people helping so many youths fight poverty through culture and performance. I'll give you a brief history. Yoga is an ancient practice of physical and men mental exercises that help culture and cultivate the state of the mind. Well, you can do this through breathing exercises, physical postures, and sometimes you can do it through meditation. And today, that's what we're talking about on Tad Show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Touch your life and change Yoga is one practice that is not well understood in Kenya and even Africa at large. It is more popular in Asia and Western world. But this trend is quickly changing and people are embracing yoga. Yoga is the science that teaches people the method of uniting the individual soul with the supreme soul. In simpler terms, yoga is the steady movement of the individual soul towards the supreme soul. Yoga has mental and physical health benefits. Mentally, yoga ensures wellness of mind and peace. At the physical level, yoga has proven to be extremely effective for various disorders. Some of the benefits include increasing flexibility, complete detoxification, increased lubrication of joints, ligaments and tendons, excellent toning of muscles. In Kenya, the Africa Yoga Project, AYP, provide most of yoga classes in Nairobi where there are 42 teachers showing the ropes to people who practice yoga in close to 50 places with an average of 200 students per week and over 100 classes per week. Sit up. What are the things that you got from that time that you, you made positive change that you're having right now, right here? Something positive. Love. Love. Yeah, Bruce had love. Outside of Nairobi, there is little or virtually no mention of yoga practices. Kenya is fast becoming a global village, and it won't be long before this practice catches up with the rest of the country. Everything natural, everything flower or tree, and every animal has important lessons to teach us if we would only stop, look, and listen. Africa Yoga Project was started in 2007 after the post-election, but now they are doing more things. And the goal of Africa Yoga Project is to make a permanent difference in the lives of people just like they've experienced as a team. Let's take a look at this. Yoga teaches us to cure what need not be endured and endure what cannot be cured. Yoga is all about flexibility of the mind, body, and spirit. <laughs> okay, legs up, legs up, hands straight, push back. What many believe to be a religion for the Hindu community is slowly spreading across the world, socially accepted as a form of exercise. In Kenya, the Africa Yoga Project are best known for yoga. 
The AYP offers hundreds of free yoga classes as well as social services. Sarakasi also has small projects which are also working with Sarakasi as their outreach program. And Africa Yoga Project is one of the projects that is working with Sarakasi. Africa Yoga Project stands for unity, possibility, and non-violence. The AYP yoga teachers, youth mostly from the slums, experienced personal transformation from yoga. I was doing yoga like three years ago. I am during that 207. So only come three years ago. Yeah. I am now me even even change life yango. Like me say is sing a stand even in Kongale. Like the way I'm looking you, I was shy. Ni lugwa na kunyo pombe happy. Nakula, Mugoka, smoking, Mabangi, but I'm telling you, a real change. It is this experience that AYP yoga teachers are determined to spread across the country. They base their training on principles and practices of possibility, unity, healing, and non violence. Yoga means possibility, non violence, na unity, na love. Touch a life and pain, someone. They say a yogi is characterized by profound wisdom, constant calmness, and impartable happiness. This is what describes my next guest. This AYP coordinator is always smiling and happy, calm and collected. He says he wasn't always like this. Not only has yoga improved his personality, it has got him travel around the world. And slowly coming to downward facing north. Downward facing north. This young man from the slums would have never thought he would be traveling the world, advising the youth. The past is the past. Create the present and move to the future. Yeah? Yoga is the fountain of youth. Sarakasi has a, a project also, which is hospital project that really works with kids in the hospitals who like they can't afford coming out of the hospital because of their bills so Sarakasi always finds a way of making attention to these kids 
and like the hospital project works in these hospitals and they really support these kids in just like calming them, bringing them fun in their life, making them laugh where they can't laugh and just try to work something with the hospitals that really infuses love and peace together. You are only as young as your spine is flexible. Left leg goes up, send it up. Inhale. Exhale. Touch your life and pain. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the coordinator of Africa Yoga Project, Moses Mbaja. <laughs> Karibu Moses. Thank you. I, I, you, you're always calm. The few times I've met you, you're always calm, you're always confident, you're always happy. Is the secret <laughs> yoga or you've always been like this? Mm, it's part of yoga. Yeah. A huge part yoga has played mm -hmm. in my life is that I've found calmness and happiness, mm -hmm. understanding myself and understanding the nature of my life and the people whom I'm always around with. Mm -hmm. yeah. How long have you practiced yoga? This is my seventh year. Seven years? Yeah. And what, what's different in your life, Ulikwaze before and now with yoga? Um, way back before, Ulikwa mostly anger management, I didn't have, I didn't know how to control my anger. I didn't know how to express myself in a good manner when I'm angry, like I can hold it and just let it go at some point. But through yoga, I've learned how to manage my anger. Mm -hmm. I've learned how to look things differently. Like I can look at something and don't think negative about it. Yeah. I always see a possibility in something, though it can be negative or positive, there is always a possibility in each and every negative thing. Wow, that's something nice. You're the coordinator of Africa Yoga Project. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit about the project, how it started and how, it, how far you've come to this point. Um, Africa Yoga Project started in 2007, in the end of 2007 and the beginning of 2008. Um, basically, we began during the post-election violence. Mm -hmm. so. We came as a group of acrobats, dancers, drummers, and musicians. And we were being led by one American female, yeah. whom her name is Paige Ellenson. And she's, she's my mentor, mm -hmm. really, in this, all of this. So I went to the Sarakasi, where I used to work with my group of seven acrobats. And there we met with Paige and she was teaching us yoga at that time. We really didn't understand very much about it, but we were mm. practicing most of the times. So we came up as a group of 25 artists, dancers, acrobats, and we were visiting IDP camps. And in these camps, we were giving messages mostly about <coughs> peace and being together. Mostly in these workshops which we were giving, at the end we will come up as a one big circle and hold hands and we will, we will say say our names. I could say my name and someone else, even the people who are at the camps, mm -hmm. could say their names and where they are from and what they like. Funny thing is that we found different tribes in the same, in camp. The same camp. And they were being kicked out in where they were. And at the end, when these people hold their hands and raise their hands up, the thing which they wanted was peace. I and wanted that, that peace. that brief action is actually Achieving something. Yeah, mm -hmm. togetherness. And I needed that peace. Kenyan well needed that peace mm -hmm. at that time. And how far have you come now? So from that point, from that point to now, we've really grown. Like we've reached many people. Right now we are teaching in prisons, schools, playgrounds, social halls, wow. even like everywhere. Like it's getting to be known, Africa Yoga Project, what we are doing. And Mostly we are, we are reaching young people who, like we are heading in the elections, it's, it's way at okay. the corner. Yeah. So right now we are still preparing each and every youth mentally and physically. What are you teaching them? Mostly about living healthy and living in peace. Living in peace. And healthy. So what principles do you teach them? Uh, the principle which I teach mostly is to stay healthy, like physically. Yeah eat well, and live mostly peacefully with everyone. 
and always try to look for possibility, not inability yeah. in your life and in everyone. Every, like every challenge has a way to come through. Mm, yeah. So you grew from 25 teachers. How many are you now? Because this is also providing jobs for the youth, isn't it? Yeah, it's providing. Right now we are having 38 teachers. Yep. And they're all teaching in their own communities. They are showing leadership skills. Like they're being leaders in their own communities. And they're that's, the change. Yeah, they are the change that I am, like the, the way I am, I'm the change. They are the change. We are all the change. All of these 38 peoples reaching for 2,500 people giving the same message of peace and love and staying healthy. Mm -hmm. So if we all share this, even with the people who are getting the message out there, if we reach 5,000, 10,000, then comes the election, people know that what we are talking about, if something happens, these 2,500 people, maybe they'll be the one maybe not in a good place yes. because they'll be innocent. Yes. But they'll be always restoring one thing, which is peace. And they will see a possibility, as you said. Yeah. They will see a possibility in the negative. How much do you charge for your services for yoga? Mm, basically, it depends. Like at the dome, it's a free class. It's a community class. It's open for anyone. It, it was designed for the teachers to come and practice to keep them active because they are going back to their communities and teach. Yes. And then it became interesting that the communities where the teachers were teaching got interested more and they wanted more. They were demanding more. Yes. So they had to come for this class. And the students who showed up in this class, they've never stopped showing up. Every day. Every Saturday, each and every Saturday they show up and they are getting even much more stronger than the first time I saw them. Mm -hmm. And they are even getting much more wiser. They ask a lot. And that's the same thing which also Kenyans should do. Yeah. They should start asking a lot to know a lot. If you ask, you'll know. Yeah. You said you target children and the youth. Why? Why the children and the youth? Uh, because leaders, they're the young people. The young people are the leaders of tomorrow. Yes. And basically now it's not tomorrow. It's today, now, here. So we need them. We need them. So they begin there where they are, teach them from that point. When they are growing, they are growing as leaders. What do you get out of yoga? Um, first, is to connect to yourself. Um, when was the last time for you, let me ask you this, when was the last time that now you... <laughs> when, when was the last time that you even thought about paying attention to your heartbeat, your own heart? Like you just sit and just pay attention, just listen to the heartbeat. Just one time I ran so hard. <laughs> After that's, running. That, that's the only like time I've oh, ever thought about my heartbeat. My heart is heartbeat. beating. Oh so, yeah, I have never so thought about it. So you find basically most of the people don't pay attention to that. They don't acknowledge their own hearts. They have it. No and one it's ever, the most important thing yeah. that you have. Yeah. So that's one of the things. You just connect to yourself, like listening to your own heartbeat, give, acknowledging it. Like, hey, buddy, Thank you're you. here <laughs> and you're doing a good job. I'm alive. Yeah. <laughs> and then like stretching, reaching somewhere further, like just touching your toes, paying attention to your own body, how your blood is flowing. You're just connecting to yourself. You're not connecting to anything on the outside world. Mm -hmm. You just connect, paying attention to your own body, mm -hmm. listening to your breath. That's the thing. Yeah. And it really feels good. Does it help? It really helps. Mm -hmm. You stay fit, healthy, always young and strong. Always young and strong. We'll take a short break. <laughs> when we come back, we meet one lady who believes that her life has transformed. And there's a saying that goes that if you can do something, yoga teaches you to do it even better. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Yoga is now in Africa, surpassing all types of boundaries that you could think of, surpassing religion, tribe, age, even physical boundaries. Let's take a look at this. The post-poll violence of 2008 brought out the deep feelings of ethnicity amongst the Kenyans. This was a time for reckoning. For Faith, a resident of Huruma, 
she saw these happenings firsthand and it shook her into wanting to make a difference. Using yoga, she embarked on a mission to bring back unity in Huruma. Kitu mzuri wanza nyumbani. Sana nikasemaji, hakuna haja niende nikabadilishe watu wako mbali na mahali ninaishi bado wa, watu wako na hiyo shida. Sana nilisema mimi sitaipeleka ati nipeleke maybe mbali kama kama Kibira Jericho nilinatu nilikuwa na nifundisha watu wa hapa ndio wakwe watu wako pamoja wanasikizana hawako violence Most of the youth who participated in the violence were idle and according to faith yoga has helped both young and old find inner peace that has helped people in this area live as brothers and sisters Hii subject ya yoga yenye nafundisha watu naona imepunguza ukabila watu wamekuwa na possibilities kwa maisha yao na vitu mingi zimewa open ya up wamekuwa at least na mwangaza kitambo walikuwa katika kwenye giza lakini sasa hii wako kwa mwangaza alafu ukibring out unatoa zile vitu mbaya zote bibi unatoa kwenye ndoke such a life and thing some Today on the Tad Show, it's all about yoga. It's physical and mental exercises that improve or fosters your physical, emotional, and mental well-being. And students who come out of yoga become more self-sufficient, they become confident, and more hopeful. And with me right now is the evidence of that. Welcome, Margaret. Thank you. You are in Mexico. Yeah, I was in Mexico. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> How, what were you doing there? Oh, uh, From I, Cariobangi to Mexico. Tell me the journey, actually. That's that's. How had to, to believe. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> First, I didn't know mm -hmm. if I can go in Mexico. Mm -hmm. I was like shocked, I was surprised. I didn't know myself, I could get myself like in the plane. So, and I, <laughs> I, I got myself alone because the page told me I'll go with Moses and Moses was busy. He went in Italy, mm -hmm. so I was God. Am I traveling alone? I haven't been playing. Oh my God, what am I going to do? I say, I remember, Baron say, yeah. if it's not now, when? I say, God, give me the, the courage. Know, yeah, and I do it. I, I went alone, I, like I was switching the flight, and I didn't lose anymore. <laughs> and I got myself in there. I get them, they're waiting for me. They welcome me very well. Yeah. I really enjoyed there. We, I got them to yeah. learn. I go to learn. Oh, you were to learn yoga yeah, still? Yeah, yeah, yoga. You told me that you learned English. You yeah. couldn't speak English before. Yeah, I couldn't speak English. I was like, I don't have perfect English. Kwanini, you've never gone to school? Yeah, in Karibangi, you know, this school for slums. Yeah. You need to do this. Yeah. So I didn't learn English because my mother can't pay, pay money school for fees. school fees. Will you pick a class? It's eight and I... I stop. stop. Ume overcome vitu mingi sana. Sana. Na life yako ime change. Stop, sorry. Ulikuwaje kabla ujanza yoga? Kidogo tu maisha yako ulikuwa unafanya nini? Okay, I was doing acrobat. And then first, una, I was, nilikuwa dembaya. Nilikuwa naiba na naenda kusmoke sindu unona, ana kuplay. <laughs> Jiyo, yeye, ndo alifanya nika kuwa hivi. Uh -huh. Jiyo, ana, ataki niki nda shule ni stress. Nini stress? Kwa nyuma ni stress. So I mean, na ina bidi nene ni ibe juno na demo me dunga jo eh abe kudunga sijudi le. I mean, I take a kunga ra, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm a girl. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I need to be like that girl. So we go to. Kero mto me ni katruza ko kamba. I'm going and steal it. Oh my God. Yeah. Nene nda na finisha bili. Ita julika na una. Na na iva. Na na iva. Eh na na iva. Una na. I was in bad situation and I don't want to. To like, go back there. Yeah, yeah. Do you smoke anymore? No, no, no. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I changed. I was eating the mira. Mo yeah, <laughs> and I changed right now. How I long? Didn't... How how long has it been since you smoked, drank, or chewed mira? Umeka kama me kanga pitango. Mokamoja. Ah. Yeah. Na life yako ime change aje. Other than vile ume umeacha ku smoke, umeacha ku drink. Nini gine me badilika kwa personality yako? Oh, I was shy. Aunge kwa unaongea hivi vile unaongea. Hata vile na kuangalia hivi, singeza kukuangalia and I was not hata kwa class singeza kuangalia watu. No no no, I was shy. Oh my god. Unaniongelea kwa eh. Na hiyo change ili happen pole pole ama ulistukia tu siku moja umeamka uko different. No no, not just to carry up. Ili change because tulikuwa boot camp with Baptist and it was 
one week mm -hmm. my god will it truly change nilikuwa be the change i want to say in the word nilikuwa be the change so sasa baptist tulinda huko baptist unajua alikuwa atufunza baptist is the founder of the africa yoga project here and is the founder also of the type of yoga called power vinyasa yoga which is what they practice yeah. so you keep saying baptist i just needed to explain uh huh yeah uh, baron baptist alikuja kenya kutufundisha unajua watu kabla upate baptist you need to raise money kabla akuje so si alikuja for free unajua alikuja kutufundisha for free kwa sababu si ni wa kenya tumeamua ku step up like to change sana sana slums ndio watu wako na shida mingi ndio wezi wanatoka ndio unafikiria nini kitu kama inaweza saidia watu kama wenye wako kwa youths wenye wako kwa slum to change their lives actually mm. kabisa itawasaidia kabisa kwa sababu kai me change mimi it change pia wewe unaona ni poor kwa sababu kwanza watu siku ya nani violence watu wame fight nini so inawasaidia yoga it's help mm -hmm. like si ju, kwa sababu yoga ina bring together si ndio so kama tutaka bring together si tupeleke hii yoga to the community na tutapata tuna move on na tunaenda mbele kabisa tueleze so, vile vile ume, ume, umefunza watu yoga mm -hmm. students wako ume change maisha ya mtu kuna mtu anaweza sema huyu na huyu na huyu walikuwa hivi na wamebadilika yeah tell me wako wana wako karibangi mm -hmm. if you want you can i can take you yeah. i'll show you ungewaona vile walikuwa wame change baka physically yeah physically like walikuwa pia wako na mshene mshene <laughs> wame change walikuwa na stress za bwana zao wame change unajua baka unapata hadi wewe ukimuona unaona ame change alikuwa shy baka anakuongelesha hata ukiangalia unajua ukiangalia na watoto wadogo What? Oh, I, I teach kids. Yeah. Oh my God, kids are not poor because they don't have fun now. Now when I change, like you know, I'm here. When I go, when I find a, when I find a cool guy, when I find a cool guy, yeah. When I do what I want, when I find a cool dude. So okay, I'm here with you. No peer pass exam. When I go, when I'm here, kids are first. Remember, we should not shame the Zuwako. Kids are first. Respect. Yeah, respect. Kwa hiyo unafunza vitu mingi si yoga peke yake. Si yoga peke yake. Na pia hizo hizo exercise za yoga pia zinapatia mtu discipline. Kabisa. All right. That was Margaret. So much fun. I can't believe it. We'll take a short break. We'll be back after this time for way. Class yetu iko karibu na kwanza. Na kama ukupata nafasi ya kuwa kwenye hizi zinaitwa yoga mats. He has taken yoga classes to Eldoret where post election violence affected thousands and to IDP camps hoping to reconcile and foster forgiveness by practicing yoga. Pole pole kadri unavyopumua nje ndio unavyoregesha chini kiuno chako. Musa believes that the youth should get involved in activities that will help them physically and strengthen their psychology. Vuta pumzi ukinyanyua mikono yako juu mikono iko size ya mabega sipa na sana umekunja size ya mabega na inaendekeza kwenye masikio he believes money should not be the only motivation to work and help community yoga is possible for anybody who really wants it Today's topic is about yoga, interesting and entertaining at the same time. What's fascinating is a lot of people still believe that yoga is a religion. And for me, some of the most strict religion, one of the most strict religion actually is Islam. And joining me right now is Musa, who's a Muslim doing yoga. So, welcome Musa. Asante sana. Ebu niambie, mbono kama kwa religion yako, watasikiaje wakisikia unafanya yoga? wengi watashangaa labda kwa vile hawana ufahamu wa yoga ina maanisha nini mm -hmm. labda pia ni hawana ufahamu kwa yoga ni mazoezi na pia hawajapata pia kuingia labda kwenye klasi za yoga wakapata kutambua ni nini kilichomo ndani ya yoga kwa nini watu wengi udhani ni, ni religion uh, pengine po labda fikra zao zinawatuma katika zile poses za yoga vile zinaenda slow movement na kuna meditation ndani yake ambayo labda pia ina matatizo akili zao anakuta mtu anafunga macho na iko kimya lakini sasa hajatambua maana kufunga macho labda ni kimimi naweza sema kufunga macho ni kuondoa kwa mfano mimi kama nataka ku meditation meditation nataka uwe 
uko uko calm na kuna kitu tunakusumbua wazungu wanaita si obstruction na kuna obstruction kitu kama hicho shaona <laughs> sasa ukishafungua macho unaweza una movement fly tu ikakutoa kwenye ile akili yako kwa sababu physical na mental kwenye yoga ndio zinatumikana mara nyingi so watu wasifikiri ni kuomba mtu anaomba ah uh-uh, si kuomba unafunga macho ku avoid obstruction eh yeah, kitu kama hiyo wewe yoga imekufanyia nini tangu uanze ah mengi sana ajira <laughs> kwanza alafu pia napata tiba healing katika yoga uno, una heal stress una heal kichwa chako akili yako akili na mambo mengi biashara za ulimwengu mambo kadha kadha shona sasa kiingia pale na mambo ya yoga unakuwa unapunguza pia mambo fulani fulani kwenye kichwa okay na ulianza yoga lini na kwa nini ulianza yoga first time mimi nilikuta ni mchezo tu wa ku stretch nini sikuwa na ile ufahamu zaidi alafu mbele ni itakuwaje sasa mara na kwepa madarasani katika darasa la yoga na GTX excuse leo na umwana pale anza kufanya yoga mimi niko mitini kiasi natulia unaona mitini si ati kuingia mitini lakini na kwepa yani na, 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 na skip na, na skip classes alafu sasa ikaja ikaja paka ikakuwa sasa inaingia tu mwenyewe inaingia tu mwilini mpaka nikikosa class na jisikia eh hey, leo sikufanya yoga na sikia kuboeka mwilini nini mpaka ika kwa hivyo baadaye nikaona manufaa sababu ilikuwa na problem ya mgongo utu wa mgongo hapa kwa kiketi na napenda kuegemea siwezi kiketi tu hivi hivi mm-hmm. napenda kuegemea sasa ikaenda enda paka ka realize kuwa ah, ile problem niliisha pia unafanya acrobatics eh nafanya acrobatics mm-hmm. alafu acrobatic mazoezi yetu ni mengi sana si ati mambo ya ku stretch okay tuna stretch ngawaje lakini tuna stretch labda miguu tuna sau kwenye mgongo hips nini na nini kitu kama hivyo nakuta umeshpana sasa ikakuwa ni saidia tu kupunguza uzee. Punguza uzee. Punguza. Kuna documentary ambayo mnafanya. Hebu tuelezee kuhusu hiyo documentary ambayo mnafanya na mmesaidia watu vipi. Documentary. Tumefanya project nyingi taji, labda nikumbushe. Hiyo <laughs> ambayo ya ya post election. Post election violence. Mm. Sasa post election ile project ya post election violence ni kuponya tu wale kaka zetu walioathirika kuhusu kuwa labda inaonekana wako na upweke yani vitu fulani fulani avafiki labda kuna ahadi labda alizopewa mioyo yao labda ile athirika kifikiria yale mambo aliyotendeka labda kuna watu wale walaghai kwa njia hii ama nyingine ni, ni njia moja wapo pia kuponya roho za wale kufanya nao yoga kuwapatia matumaini katika maisha siji kutoa kwa peke yao wewe unafunza nani yoga ah mimi nafunza ah, katika classes zangu zile nafunza niko na na classes za watoto lakini sasa kulingana na mafunzo mafunzo yangu Yoga ichagui umri. Uwe ni mzee, uwe kijana, makamo, barubaru. Yoga inaku inakualika. Hebu tuelezee poses kidogo za yoga. Kama tatu nne, alafu tuelezee zina maana gani. Ah. <laughs> kwa maanisha maana labda naweza naweza kuwa na wadanga. Kwa sababu mara nyingi sana poses zinapewa majina si ati inaleta maana. Ina napa majina kwa ukumbufu fulani kama unasikia kuna jina la mbwa kwenye pose sasa unashangaa ah jina la mbwa tena si atuabudu maumbo lakini lakini si wanyama tunaabudu ili tu ukumbuke kama ni pose fulani kwa haraka kuna downward facing dog kuna kuna tadasana tadasana kuna 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 dancers pose sasa unaingia kwenye balancing series unaona dancers pose okay pose nyingi ziko warrior 1 warrior 1 okay. sasa ziko kwenye sun salutation b sasa hapo ushafanya sun salutation a ni kama body warm up Alafu naingia kwenye sun salutation B, naingia kwenye warrior one, warrior two, na variation flan flan. Hizo zote kwenye warrior one na ina inasaidia concentration, focus. Kama kwenye warrior warrior eh yeah, warrior one, anakuambia uangalie juu katikati ya mikono yako. Sasa hapo ni kama ku focus ili akili yako sasa isikuwe na eh labda hii pose, yani usikuwe na Fikra. fikra nyingi ambazo zinaweza kubabaisha akili mwako kutoka kwenye ile focus yako na concentration kwa sababu kwenye yoga wanakuambia physical na mental si ndio mm-hmm. zina combine pamoja sasa akili ikishatoka pale hata ile pose utakuwa uifanyi tu unafanya tu labda huko tu kama statue lakini sasa huko kama ile pose yenyewe inafaa kuwa wewe na sketch ile chako ni cha Mombasa umekuja Nairobi ume, umekuja juu ya yoga na ume ama umekuja kikazi tu Nairobi mimi nakuja ku hustle ku <laughs> <laughs> na ume, una, unaona utabadilisha maisha ya watu. E, kabisa, hata sasa hii nabadilisha maisha yangu. Nakuja Nairobi kwanza nakuja kutafuta kwa acrobat. Shaona, nilipoingia Nairobi mchaka mchaka wa acrobat, rafikawa sasa 
page anakuja na uh, aka Caroline anakuja introduction ya yoga sasa Caroline alituma na sarakasi pia unaona alafu Caroline akaenda wali mfulani fulani wakaingia sasa akaingia page na best yake alituma Kelly Kelly Aikins wakatufundisha Kelly Aikins akaenda sasa page na ile ile idea sasa kulingana na vile tulikuwa tunamweleza sasa sisi tunamuuliza maswali sasa sisi yoga inatusaidia na nini kwa sababu tunazo ya acrobat kushamaliza kufanya tizi labda unaweza itwa maalum ka perform mm -hmm. kitangu cha tujui yoga inatusaidia vipi sasa nafikiri jambo hilo nilimkereketa sana kilini wake paka akaja na idea wazo la kuweka hii African Yoga Project ilikuwa ni 2007 hapo sasa kwa tuko pamoja kuna Waka... vijana wengi sana huwa wanafanya kazi yeah. ili kupata pesa Umepa, umeona umuhimu ya kufanya kitu bila kuf, kufikiria pesa? Eh, eh muhimu huko kwanza unapata unapata ujuzi katika ile kazi, mbali na ile, ele pesa hizi ile. Sababu pale unapata unapata ujuzi wa kazi, unajifundisha mambo mengi kwanza kujumuika na watu. Eh, kama na eh, pia si mara nyingi yani unapofanya una, una, mambo unafikiria hela. Unafaa pia utoelewe utu wako bwana, sio? Eh, si ati hela ndio inafanya kila kitu. Uh, Ungenda, ungependa kuambia je vijana wa mtaani ambao wana kazi wametulia tu wana wajui wafanya nini ungependa kuambia je? Awache kuzuba mtaani, wajaribu tu mambo tofauti tofauti. Wale na ile tabia ya kujaribu mambo. Ukisikia kitu kimetokea na kama kina manufaa instead of complain na kuikashifu yani ah kitu fulani si utafanya kitu fulani. Ujajaribu bado lakini sasa ushakitia ila kuwa kitu fulani kina yeah. madhara fulani uh -huh. na bado hujajaribu. Na wakati ule ule pia kuna wengine nao wanafanya na wanakuambia haiwezi uh, 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 ama uh, wana, wanafanya na wanasaidika yani na maanisha wanafanya na wanasaidika lakini sasa wewe unaikashifu tu ili kuvunjisha watu morali labda ama sitomfahamu kitu mm. kama hicho Well Maganthi once said be the change that you want to see in the world these boys are clearly the change that we want to see we'll take a short break don't go away Welcome back. We're now taking questions from the audience. We have been talking about yoga. You've missed a lot, but if you're just joining us, we'll hear some questions. We've talked to people from Africa Yoga Project who are based in Sarakasi, and we have questions from my audience. My name is Nsato Ken from Kenya Institute of Mass Communication. I would like the challenges that you guys are facing. We have many, many challenges, but there is one major one. Because many people say that yoga is a religion. For sure, I would like to urge those people who say that yoga is religion, it is not. Yoga is a practice like any other practice. Usiogope mtie yote, kusema vile uko, if at all you want to change, step up. Na uonesha na ile kitu, unataka kuchange. Don't, usiogope mtie yote. Yeah. I'm Wesonga Franklin from Kenya Institute of Mass Communication. What are the main risks involved when taking yoga practicals or lessons? Kulingana na risk zile zipo kwenye mazoezi ya yoga ni kwamba katika darasa ya yoga kuna instructor anakuelezea vile sequence inaenda. Sasa katika zile sequence kuna asanas ambazo ni poses. Uh, kwenye poses kuna alignments vile unafaa poses kuifanya. Kufano kama kwenye warrior 1 um, instructor anakuambia migu yako inakuwa katika kiwango gani kama ni kukunja kama ni mguu wa kuume uko mbele anakuambia uweke kwenye angle gani yani kuna vipengele tofauti tofauti ambavyo anakuelezea kwa pose fulani ndio inatekana iwe hivyo na ingawa utaenda kinyume na hivyo vile anakuelezea kwenye zile alignments za, za postures sasa hapo ndo risk zinatokea unaweza pata injury na kutoa unapata injury ya mgoti ya magoti unaweza pia pata injury ya mgongo kama unaenda wheel kinyume na, na, na instructions za instructor vile ame construct zapata back problem pia another risk which is possible for for it to occur in the class when you are practicing it's like bef even before the class the instructor needs to understand your physical health like if you have an injury <coughs> somewhere you have to say it you have to tell him before you begin the practice so he can understand your way, the way of your health. Mm -hmm. Another thing is 
in wi with women, if you have a back problem, you have to say it fast. If something is wrong with your back, you have to say it fast. Because if you can't, if you don't say it, then you might be sent to a posture which might end up hurting you even more. Well, as always, thank you so much to Kenya Institute of Mass Communication, Sarah Kasi for providing us with this lovely, lovely guest today, Moses, the jugglers, Faith, Margaret, and Musa. Keep doing what you're doing, and you will get results out of it. Be the change that we want to see. Lead the change. And for viewers at home, as always, we have a question. Name two yoga positions. Name two yoga poses that you have had on this, on this show today. Send your answer to 3223, the number appearing on your screen right now, or send it to taj at kbc.co.ke. Send your answers there. Let's keep in touch. Give advice, give comments, give opinions. Talk to us. Let's know what you feel about the show. Thank you so much for watching. Life is like a river. Wherever it takes you, you have to go there. However, you can grow. Things might not change, but you can. Wherever you are, remember to be positive. Don't be violent and always stay united. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.